I am feeling just as excited as I was yesterday. I am ready for some exciting best of three match today. For well, let's go ahead and hop into it. We've got Stevenson versus Oakland, A team. Uh, we've already started the draft. We see quite a few bands. Oakland going and banning Jinx, Zin Zhao, and Caitlyn. And uh, why don't you take off the Stevenson bands for me? Uh, well, so far, we're seeing the Yumi, the Ziggs, and the, uh, the Zeri ban here. And I, I, I think it's going to be a good pick, too. Although, I did see a few members of the Stevenson University did play Zeri quite a lot. So, taking them off the table, I think it's more so of uh, they're not going to get that first pick. So, they, they might as well not bother with it. Maybe next game, we'll probably see it. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, just just the meta right now is saying that you have to ban a first pick. I mean, it's just what what it is. So, uh, you know, I think to me it's a little bit stale when that uh, is the case, but it's often the case with League of Legends meta where just one or two champions are just must bans. Yeah, and we're seeing an interesting pickup from the bot lane, I would assume, for Stevenson, the Zyra and Rakan, uh, Zaya Rakan bot lane. Yeah, lovers duo right there. Haven't seen that in quite a bit. This is uh, this is going to be interesting to see how they pull that off. It's not it's not as if it's awful, but I just don't think it's quite in the meta right now. Yeah, I mean, I I've there has been a little bit of time where they, I, them individually don't do as well as them together. Of course, they have a lot of utility towards each other, but I don't know. There's just there's so many different picks you can pick off for that bot lane to have that level of success but i mean oh man i, I don't know about this already on soul pick oh man oh <laughs> i was getting pretty excited there to see a really in soul that's a little bit troll <laughs> you know what's funny though he was highly he was the highest win rate champion in solo queue for quite a while i don't know if he still is it's been a while since i checked but he was pretty up there yeah, it's one of those champions where if you main the champion and you sink a ton of hours into it, it's great. But if you don't, it's just awful. Yeah, pretty much well said. So and we okay. saw we saw yesterday this Gwen pick, or I guess it might be a ban here. Gwen yesterday was just scary to deal with for the top lane of Oakland University, and I, it looks like they don't. Maybe they're a little bit traumatized. John was telling them all about it with Zek too. Yeah, even though it's oh, a different team, you know, Gwen's been a pick that we've been, it's been on our radar for quite a long time. It's John, uh, when he is in top lane, is a huge fan of picking Gwen. In this case, it's going to be with Zach. So, uh, man, we, we're a pretty flexible team as far as our League of Legends yeah. squads. Uh, a team, B team, we're swapping players around, swapping roles. Uh, in, in this case today, just to set the record straight, it's John is the top laner for our squad. And, uh, today he'll be playing support. Uh, our, our main support Bello is, uh, out. And so he's been needed to sub in a support instead. And so our top laner from B team was will be coming in and joining us. Actually, he plays jungle for the B team now, but <laughs> yeah, on, what a phenomenal jungle he was. If it translates as well as it does over in this top lane, I, we're in for a huge treat. Although it, I, I think it's also a bit of a shame too, because Wizak's jungle was just always at the right place at the right time, initiating very well in, in different team fights, getting good ganks. We're not going to see that as much over in the top lane, which is like that isolation, desolate island, paradise that maybe Wizek might be able to thrive in but I mean it won't benefit the team as much until maybe during those mid uh mid game skirmish team fights yeah I'll, I'll give out the insider information and I'm sure Wizek would would agree with me he is a better jungler than he is a top laner great at both but definitely a better jungler so uh it'll be interesting to see how he fares in top lane that's his secondary role um so yeah, and, and same same with it's John, a better top laner than a support, but he's always been a very flexible player playing every single role except for ADC is where you can put him. So uh, they're hovering Ivern. This might be a little bit of a, a troll, but uh, one of it's John's favorite picks is Ivern top lane. So <laughs> I hope to not see that come through today. <laughs> and we won't. Shogath. Shogath, okay. So it looks like what, Trinomir top, Cho... Cho Jungle, Cho maybe? Cho Jungle or That's Gwen Jungle. Clear. Could Possibly, be Gwen Jungle. Yeah. We'll see what happens. 
They've gotten pretty flexible here because Trendemir can actually go mid too. Keelan's Keelan's played Trendemir quite a few times in mid lane. And then we're gonna end up seeing the Karma mid and Choga support <laughs> just all, all over the place. We can do anything at this point. Really, actually, they could. Okay. Uh, but over on the Stevenson University side, we're seeing the Olaf. Where are they are they still they're still swapping? Yeah, right? Olaf's okay, jungle scary. for sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I was scared a little bit there too, but uh, not, nothing to be afraid of. There's no way Olaf is going support in Rakana's jungling. It's just he just would not be able to clear the jungle. So yeah, the, this ain't solo queue. So Camille over in the top side. How do you think that fares against this Cho'Gath? I can imagine earlier on Cho'Gath is going to have a bit of a rough time. Yeah, I mean it. It just depends. The only thing Cho has going for him is. <laughs> If he can time it out to where he cues the ground in front of him as Camille's engaging with her E, um, then then he can interrupt that. So and that would be huge because it's not only the damage from Camille's ability, but then the CC from it as well. Um, so that that I think that's the key to the matchup, and really it's on show to make a great play to be able to do well in the matchup where Camille just gets to gets to play and have fun, you know. Yeah, and I guess we'll 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 have to see how that plays out because that's a very high skilled thing to do to really time that and anticipate when Camille is gonna dive in. I, that's gonna take a lot of lane knowledge. And as you're yeah. saying, Wizak has a lot more better experience in the jungle, so we'll see if that somewhat translates to laning phase and top side. Because you said he's also still quite good, but I I don't know what which two lanes do you think is the most of interest. I I'm thinking maybe this mid lane and then our jungle. Yeah, it definitely keep a look on jungle. I think it's going to be more of a farming fest for Gwen. I don't think she'll really be looking to gank too much early on, just given that she's got no CC. And if you think about it, like mid lane has almost no CC to set up for the Gwen gank. I mean, you got Trinimir slow sometimes, but it's not much. Um, so I think the game hinges a bit on whether or not Keelan is able to farm in this mid lane. If he's able to get enough sustain and CS throughout Ari's harass, then I think we'll be in a good spot. But uh, that, that's going to be a tough matchup there. And then the fact that Olaf is just a much better ganker early game than Gwen is, that might be something that tilts the early game into the favor of Stevenson University. But I think this is a pretty good matchup here. I give uh, late game to OU, and hopefully they can weather out the storm of the early game. I think so too, and uh, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see how this game turns out. A lot of it is going to be dependent on that laning phase, like you said, and a lot of it is on how those jungles fare. But I guess in the meantime, we got a one minute delay. Yep, we got one minute left. We're gonna go ahead and head to a break, get some bopping music back up, and then we'll be back to join you when the when the game starts. Power through the tournament with the high quality protein milk provides to stay energized and focused throughout the game.
And welcome back. We're headed into game one of today's best of three against Stevenson University. We've got Oakland University on the blue side, bottom left. Stevenson on the top right, red side. See how we and do level one here. I'm sorry. Definitely. No, I, I, I always love to see a good level one fight, but more than likely or not, all these teams just want to play it safe, but just gathering as much information they can or... I guess getting the style points of pushing back this Mothman from recalling. Yeah, the most, one of the scariest champions level one for me, uh, for personal experience, is Olaf. And it seems like Stevenson University maybe doesn't, doesn't appreciate how strong Olaf is with Ghost level one. Uh, because of the fact that the axe slows and hits multiple targets and you get a reset on it when you pick it up, uh, with Ghost, he can really run down one or a few people. So um, whenever I have Olaf on my team, I always push for an invade to try and get a cheesy level one. He's one of the strongest champions, but uh, Stevenson, uh, not going for that. Maybe they think it's a little bit too risky. Yeah, especially since they didn't have that vision information to know exactly where the rest of the team is they maybe could have gone for that level one invade like you said but seems that it, there's a lot of stake as, as well they just don't want to make that easy mistake that i guess league players tend to do yeah man and you see uh mid lane actually going pretty well for keelan that was yeah. an area that i was worried about and he's able to chunk out ari here get all of his farm make Ari farm under tower and get a Roman. This is pretty incredible. Yeah, you know what I think is happening here? Kit Boy is a little bit underestimating what Keelan's able to do. Yes, in general, I'd say Ari does win out this lane against Trindamir. However, the one caveat is if you let Keelan on Trindamir do whatever he wants and walk up to you and get those autos off, more often than not, an AD carry or some kind of AD assassin damage dealer mid lane will fair off a lot better earlier on, but it seems like there's gonna be a team fight here. Bit of fight in the lane here. Good trade back from Oakland. Oh, Nefarious with a bit of an aggressive E back in to get some extra damage. Aiden down to just maybe 100, 150 health, but he's got a few pots to get back up. Yeah, what a back and forth lane there. I mean, is it so much damage being dished out for really no punishment? Yeah, so something that uh, Stevenson, it looked like, opted into that fight. It's kind of hard to see. We caught it right at the end of it. But, uh, yeah, Oakland University off to a decent start. Up 300 CS, 400 CS just off of farm. So we'll have to see if that continues. It doesn't really mean too much, but at least it's a good sign to start. Yeah, and I like this these pings that you're kind of seeing from... Oakland University, they're kind of deciding where they need to go and getting these deep wards and vision in so that they know. They're, it almost seems like they're trying to figure out where Mothman's going to be so that they can avoid getting ganked. Because look how pushed up this bot lane is for Oakland University. Yeah, and bot lane's a really scary lane to be ganked as, you know, with Olaf and the enemy team because, man, he can run you down. That's a really long lane. And with Ghost, as I was talking about before, he's got a lot of power there, but uh, OU with some decent vision. They saw him coming a mile away and uh, were able to avoid that. Exactly, and that's what those deep wards are for. That's going to stop that, I guess, early snowballing that Olaf can desperately need. Yeah, if you if you really pay attention to the minimap a lot more, uh, putting him farther out into the river is a better choice than right next to the lane. Of course, it takes a little bit more time, but you get a lot more... Uh, of a head start on the gank. You know, they knew 10 seconds before he would even be in the lane that he was coming. And that's pretty important. So, yeah. Olaf back down bot lane. Maybe trying again. Yeah, might, he might be able to go to. It looks like Rakan's going to go for an engage. Flash can be used here by It's John, but doesn't look like it's going to really capture anything. All they did manage was get some information onto Olaf and I guess in a sense burn that flash from It's John. So maybe a future gank could come in. Yeah, it really was a support for support flash trade because we kind of used the flash to, to engage that. So, um, to be honest, it's a win for OU. It's wasting a lot of Olaf's time, and they look to uh, stop Karma from holding the wave here, but Gwen's going to go ahead and just pick up the CS anyway.
I, I'm surprised by the lack of damage on that fight. I mean, I, I thought it's John would take a lot more punishment for that. Yeah, just Zaya really relies on pulling back her feathers to do mo most of the damage. So uh -oh. was that a little bit scary uh -oh. here? A flash for flesh and oh man, I'll tell you what, that was a bit of a mechanical blunder. Camille definitely could have killed Cho there, but uh, I, also a bit for us. risky too, because as soon as Wizek would land some sort of knock up, then I mean, Dav Davlis is gonna go, but they, they also don't have information on where the junglers are too. Yeah, now Cho's level six now, so feeling a little bit more secure about the one v one, knowing that he oh. might be able to just kill him. He's looking for it. Oh, he's a it's predator. Coming. He's lying it's in coming. wait. Yep, she knows. She's suspicious. Meanwhile, bot lane are on the dragon, so even if all nothing it, happens here, all it takes uh, is one. Oh, oh, we, come on we, now! We don't care there it is! Oh, oh, there it is! There it is! Oh, 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 oh. oh it's not working out so far. He's got to no, eat him. No, he's gonna drop. Yep, There's no yep. way he's gonna survive to that first blood coming in for Devlis. And that's something that was that opted into, and it's a little bit more of an aggressive choice there. Uh, Camille gets that magic damage shield, and that's really what kept her alive throughout that. Yeah, I mean, it, it just the, the gap closer wasn't there for Wazek. If Wazek had flash, easy, no problem. Right. Devils would have dropped in, and before you're getting that, that shield up in time, and because he would have got the feast, he was just a step away before it. Yep. Yeah, he was looking for the feast the whole time, although I don't know if he was really in range to get the kill off of it. Um,. But again, with that with that magic damage shield from Camille, it just wasn't enough. So, oh one, Stevenson got their gold lead back, so it's definitely a good start for them. And Chogoth cannot deal with Camille in the side lane later on in the game. Maybe Gwen or Trinomir can, but Cho definitely cannot. Yeah, so with that level of mobility, it's gonna be so much harder to get those knockups. We're not seeing a whole lot of mid lane, but look at the farm lead compared to the two. Oh, knock up coming in here. It's John getting knocked airborne, but nothing really going to come from it. It's going to take quite a bit of damage, but they do spot out where this Olaf is going to engage from. Ping's already coming out, but not a whole lot can be done in this bot lane. Yeah, take a look at the CS differences here. Bot lane not doing so hot, down about 18 CS for the ADC. Mid lane, we're up about 10. Jungle, we've got a huge gap here. It's maybe 30 CS there. And then top lane, there is a 20 CS gap. So that pretty much makes up for that kill, although it was first blood. So it's worth a little bit more than that. Yeah, a little bit balanced out. I mean, they, they could make up for it, but we'll see how it's going to be oh. made up here by John getting engaged on over on the bot side, taking massive damage here. Exhaust is going to be used on Mr. Nefarious here, but he's still able to dish out quite a bit of damage. Looks like there's going to be a little bit of support here from Muzzine, but can't quite get in the right entrance just yet. Yeah, a blunder by John walking into that brush blind, but uh, his savior was he had the Empowered W from Karma, and that heals, I think it's about 20% of her max health, <laughs> or, or uh, missing health is what it heals, so, and it does that twice if you can have the tether actually go off, so, uh, that was what kept Karma alive, you saw her heal twice throughout that fight, um, maybe you summoned her heal as well, so, Barely made it out alive, and now actually you're seeing the CS difference come back a little bit. Just a little 11 CS down on the ADC, so uh, although Rakan has taken quite a few, so they're still down. Yeah, but over on the other lanes and jungler roles for Oakland University, very much in lead. You've got a 30, 30 CS lead for Musine. You've got, what is that, maybe like 20-ish over mid lane for Keelan? Yeah, Keelan's known for getting a CS lead in mid lane. He's not one to really go for aggressive 1v1 kills, although he definitely has a mechanical skill to do it. He just finds it's better, um, more consistent to just go for a CS lead and be strong every single game for the team. So uh, that's that's really what he goes for, and you can see it here paying off at Trinomir. Uh He really hasn't gone for any kills. He pokes out when he can, but... Yeah, up 20 CS on Trinomir, and you can imagine that's going to be a strong Trinomir later on in the game. Yeah, I'd be definitely scared. Even although Ari has a very great Assassin toolkit, 
I would much rather take a Trindamir over the RE in that point of the game. Yeah, <laughs> I faced Trindamir, I faced Ari. Trindamir is much scarier when fed. Or even a, just at least farmed. Like, look at right. this. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. At, at, at this level of play, it's, we're 10 minutes in, there's just one kill. They're not necessarily looking for aggressive kills. They understand the gold value of the minions and plates. Uh, so they're, they're really making more calculated decisions and just going for straight up gold value. So... Uh, when I say fed, you know what? CS actually counts towards that. <laughs> yeah. Might be seeing a gank here and bot. It's John Steven with an aggressive really play. Know, John, definitely going in aggressive. Going to be able to flash ah. away from that knockout. But Mussie going to come in right on time. But won't be able to secure anybody in just yet. It's going to be a, at least a save over for this bot side. Yeah, I'm not really sure about that play. I think, to be honest with you, John got a bit scared and flashed out when he shouldn't have. Uh about half health and he was trying to bait f for the gank for Gwen and if you're gonna flash out they can just leave uh, if he chooses yeah. not to flash out they probably try to kill him and that's what gets them killed in the first place so a bit of an unsuccessful gank there and bait um, but we do take the dragon just off of the sheer strength and the fact that Olaf is on the top side yeah, I mean, it may also have been due to the fact that maybe John did need to flash out for that dragon fight so that he has enough health to get back into it. But, I mean, it could have gone either way. Yeah, I mean, what do we know? We're sitting over here with just Mike, no keyboard and mouse, so... Yeah. <laughs> A lot easier to say what we would have done in the situation. <laughs> I would have died. Like, I'm not even going <laughs> to <lie. laughs> All right, Harold, we got use top lane. Yeah, Harold top lane, just one plate down so far. So we're not really getting max value out of it, but we're getting something. And, you know, it's 12 minutes, 30 seconds. So they only had a minute and a half to do anything else with it. Got a bit of a fight here by the blue buff. Over by blue. And Olaf is just Mo getting man. shredded. Yeah, Meanwhile, Keelan is tower diving the Ari, and there's not too much he can do. Hasn't even used the alt yet. Does not need to use it. And Nefarious... Oh, falling down here. Able to survive. Okay, that so... That was scary all across the board. I I don't know what the heck happened there with Keyland just suddenly diving, but it's, this is exactly what we're talking about. I'd rather have Trindamir than Ari at any point of... At least mid-game in a, in a fight. Because, like you saw, fully utilize all their skills. Summoner spells, Flash is down for, for Kit Boy and still yeah. dies under turret. Yeah, I think what happened there is, is that at some point Keelan had blown Ari's ult because ult is just coming back up right now. So because Keelan knew that Ari did not have ult, it's just free. You can just run her down. So, and that's what he did. Went under the tower and took her down. Still a splash too. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Olaf is really far behind here i mean we're talking two level difference and half the cs this is this is a jungle clinic we're seeing here um <laughs> i mean really up so much gold here from from yushin there on gwen so um it's gonna be stevenson's just gonna have to carry this olaf out and i hate to say it but olaf doesn't scale so it's not getting much better than this He's like able to get a good lockup, but he's taking way too much damage. I don't know if he wants to take this fight. I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, I mean, he keeps walking forward at her like he wants it, but I don't know if I would have been doing that. <laughs> I'm surprised Davis didn't turn on them at all. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe Davis oh. feels like... Oh, we got a little bit of a fight here. It's John getting caught out by Olaf. Diving under tower, but this Olaf is so squishy, he falls down and so does Karma. So one for one trade, and we see Keelan just take down that Ari in the mid lane. Oh, excuse me, a little bit of <laughs> spectator error there. <laughs> that crit damage came coming in from Keelan. I think Kit Boy was caught by surprise. Too. I was caught by surprise. Just two autos, and Kit Boy just dead. Yeah, the camera went over onto him, and uh, Ari was dead. So one for one trade in the bot lane, but Stevenson does take that bot tower. So. That's a good start for them. We'll see where the gold's at right here. They're down about 5k at 15 minutes. Actually, not a good look at all. Oakland going to target top side of the map and go for that second Rift Herald. So it's looking pretty good. 
I would say they're maybe 80% favorite to finish out this game. Yeah, definitely so. And uh, we're, we're not seeing a lot of mistakes being done here by Oakland. I mean, the, I think the only mistake we saw was from Wizak over the top lane trying to get that early kill onto Davies. But aside from that, it was just a turret dive onto It's John over the bot lane. And, and you know, it, they were able to hold that turret for as long as they can. And Mr. Nefarious ended up with a kill onto Mothman too. Yeah, we're going to see how this plays out. We had talked in draft about Cho versus Camille top, and I don't think late game Cho is going to be able to stop Camille in a side lane. So with Camille down 30 CS, and they're basically tied, they're tied in kills and deaths, you'll kind of see how that plays out. Even being down 30 CS, I bet Camille can actually side lane against this Cho no problem. And uh, as the game goes later and later, it's going to get worse and worse. With Zach with a quick catch out on the Zaya, oh, more and teleport. more slows come through. And this is a tanky Cho'Goth and a squishy Olaf gets Dead. absolutely one shot by the chomp of Cho'Goth. So a massive fight here. And Stevenson is just eliminated. A quadra kill for Mushin on that Gwen. And scumbag with Zach steals the Penta with the first kill. Why would you ever do that? <laughs> what happened there? I, I just, I, the teleport was perfect from Davies. Davies had everything set up to re-engage back into the fight and almost take down Wizak at some point. And then suddenly, I think they all kind of got grouped together and that just allowed Mussin to come in right on time and just clean up. Yeah, Stevenson focused Cho'Gath there because he was the front man leading the charge. And uh, again, that's a really tanky Cho'Gath, so you're going to get a lot of CC while you're taking that. It's John falling down in this fight. Oakland looking to retreat on the way out because now it's a 5v4. Nefarious no looking really low here. No speed buff either. And a flash in by Camille stuns up the oh. Oakland University squad, but they turn around immediately and take down three members of Stevenson. Keelan flashing, oh, I'm sorry, running down that Ari. He's going to turn around and walk away now. Doesn't have ulti anymore. No Cho Undying Rage. Cho'Gath looking to finish off the Zaya, and that's a scary Ari as she dives in. I don't believe she has any more charges. Falls down to Ezreal Alt. Some really low members on Oakland University, but it's a little bit better than being dead like Stevenson is. Man up. They can take him down. What's it going to be? Base race? There's no there ultimate damage? from Keelan, and the exhaust no comes through. Does not fall. So Stevenson lived to fight another day. That comes at a great cost, too, because if they are, weren't able to close it out here, that's still giving a chance for Stevenson University to make some sort of comeback. I'll bet a very tough one. But with an open nexus like that, it's going to be so difficult for them. Yeah, this is going to be a tough comeback. Um, I had said before, maybe 80% chance. Now it seems like it's about 90, but I'll stop giving the percentages at this point. I mean, we can just throw any number we want, really. Who's going to argue against us? We've got the mic. Uh, if I said OU was 5% favorite to win, I think they would argue. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, okay, let's see. It's John coming up into the blue side jungle, going ahead and warding up quite a bit. Just making sure that there are no flanks coming through. But I think OU is pretty confident at this point that they could just walk up and finish the game. There's no towers. It's John. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that getting caught out here on Cho? But he's pretty tanky. Just down to half health here. More and more CC coming through from Stevenson's side. But the Olaf. I can't even tell you how squishy these champions are on the Stevenson side. They're going to fall down immediately here. Oh. Olaf falling and then... Big CC from Cho'Goth, and it doesn't even matter. The Nexus is going to fall down. Oakland take game one in a pretty decisive fashion. Yeah, at that point, there really wasn't much hope for, for Stevenson. All Trinomir had to do was just walk up and with the rest of the team. Pop ulti, doesn't die, and just takes down the Nexus turret. But pretty well coordinated, well played by Oakland University. I thought that they might have a little bit more trouble with this team comp just because Cho'Gath wouldn't fare so much as well against Camille and Trindamir. I, I wasn't quite sure how the matchup would go because it kind of favors a little bit more on Ari at, at earlier on in the game, but Keelan made it work for him in his favor. So Musin just had free reign of, of 
farming the jungle, getting creeps, getting kills off left and right, and helping out this bot lane do what they can. Yeah, I mean, we had talked about it in the pregame that uh, felt like Stevenson's draft favored the early game, and it was going to be up to the jungle matchup and up to Olaf to put on a ton of pressure early game uh, and get a snowball going because I felt like OU's draft just favored late game so much more. And uh, they, they really weren't able to deliver. I mean, to be honest with you, the Olaf didn't do that much. So fell behind in CS and just didn't put ganking pressure on any lane. So, um, you know, you could put that on OU as having good vision, or you can put it on the Olaf as not being uh, efficient that game. But we'll have to see how we do in uh, in game two here. We're going to go to a short break, and when we get back into draft, we'll come back to you. And welcome back, Oakland University fans. We've got game two of Oakland University versus Stevenson University. Jumping into draft right now. That was a pretty one-sided game for the most part last match. We saw Oakland University just tear it up, I would say mostly in every lane. We saw, uh, we, we saw over on the top side, that Cho'Gath wasn't doing so well at the start, but then suddenly turned it around, and you we were even seeing, we were even seeing them push back the, the Camille away when Camille should have been winning. I mean, Camille was doing so much yeah. damage on Cho'Gath, like half health, and he was still pushing in. And I don't know. I I guess if I saw that 
some giant monster running towards me, taking so much damage and not dealing as much, but still going towards me. I don't know. I might back up. Yeah, I think what might have happened is they're just worried about the jungle coming in, right? Because in that situation, it just looked like you don't really want to fight that as Cho, you know, half health walking in, but uh, he did anyway. And maybe that's just a little bit of a bluff. You know, hey, my jungler might be around. I'm going to start walking towards you. Better walk away kind of thing. But uh, we see Zeri picked up by Stevenson University. Oh, you picking up Jinx Karma. So I guess we're looking for a similar bot lane there. Yeah, and you know what? Something also to note, we're seeing a player swap. Bello now going to be subbing in here for the support. John going to go back in the top lane. Yeah, that, that, yeah, definitely interesting. Bello is the starting support for the A team. So must have just been running late or what have you, was not able to make the first game. Uh, he actually plays for uh, an amateur team, Supernova. So um, he, he is quite busy outside as well as being a full-time student. So that is something that uh, we deal with, you know, as far as scheduling. It's something for a collegiate team that, that we work around for our students and academics come first but then sometimes amateur kind of jumps in the way too because that's pretty important so yeah games studies more games that's what's what we really need there but i i'm curious to see what this dynamic is going to change here for oakland university because we saw john was fantastic at supporting the bot lane even though he he dropped down a few times made a little bit of overextended plays just playing on the karma really did not wonders but now we're going to see most likely karma going to be played on to Bello, and we don't really know what john's going to pull up on top lane but look at this zary sliding thank through you, thank you thank you thank you yeah zary slides through they pick up jarvin and thresh you know jarvin i think is probably a better pick you know just i've only seen the one game but i think jarvin's probably a better jungler for um a mothman there at the end of the day, he's a little bit more straightforward, and <laughs> you just don't have to choose that much between ganking and farming, because farming on Jarvan just isn't as much fun as ganking is, you know? So uh, he's probably going to want to be jumping through lanes and, and actually putting on a lot of pressure. So I hope to see that again this game. Um, looking for Stevenson Jungler to put on a little bit more pressure this time and see if they can take down OU in the early game because I think that might be the chink and you know the the area that they could exploit to get a win off of OU that would be the way to do it I think so too and especially with my I, I I much more love this Jarvan pick too and like you were saying with that Olaf pick it's just there's so much more that can go wrong with Olaf but Jarvan's pretty solid around maybe not the best pick for jungle for what his utility brings but a lot more steady a lot more sturdy and and provides that pillar of support for the rest of this stevenson university team yeah i think Arrives. the main main thing is for jarvin he's more forgiving you know he's got the eq so you have an escape you can get out for olaf if you miss position you're just dead you just I mean, gotta run. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just walk away, pop ghosts, and try and walk away, and most of the time it doesn't work. I mean, you have the alt, but to be honest with you, you're so squishy if you're behind a early game that the alt doesn't actually help you. You just die before the CC matters. So, um, Jarvan is more forgiving. You get caught out, you just jump away. So, it's like uh, Rise picked up for Keelan in the mid lane here. This is a very safe late game kind of play here from OU. I don't think they're looking to do too much aggressive. And this is what we saw last game too. Early game, OU didn't necessarily pop off. They weren't looking for a bunch of kills. They weren't, you know, tower diving or doing anything crazy. Just taking their CS lead. And uh, when it came to mid game and actually working together as a team, that's where you saw OU start to shine. Exactly. So now take a look at these, some of these picks here. Rise Galio. That's a very counter mage setup and quite a few mages going to come in I, rumble mid lane is also pretty scary it's it's kind of one of those champions where it shouldn't work in mid lane but because not many people deal with it as much it 
does a surprising a lot of damage. Oh, uh, never mind. I take it back. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> Ari was there. <laughs> I, was like, I was about to go off on that. No, I, I'm actually a fan of Rumble Mid for the reason that you had pointed out. People just aren't used to it. And uh, it does a surprising amount of damage. So I think that that's something that some teams have exploited. And to be honest with you, in the past, we've had troubles with Rumble. Now, this is like a year ago so i have no problem pointing that out at this point it's not a problem but yeah I mean, we had problems with the rumble mid for a while just because the damage is so surprising um now looking yeah, at he's... ou's team i honestly i don't really like the galio pick here you've got nothing to combo it with so what what they've built here is more of a get back comp right like a peel back yeah. comp oh uh, you know, Stevenson might try and dive in with the Jarvan and, and drop the Rumble Alt and jump in a little bit. And OU's just looking to peel back and survive and then counter attack. Um, and I, I like Galio for that specifically, but typically you pair Galio with someone like Jarvan or Camille so that you have something to engage with. And OU really doesn't have that. What they have here is that. Karma can speed up the team and they can run at them, but uh, they're really o the only way that they can fight Stevenson is if they're already at the objective and Stevenson has to walk into them. So a little bit, a little bit of trouble I could see there if they fall behind early because they'll have no way of pushing into fog of war against this team. Exactly. I, I, I think it has maybe that Graves doesn't fit too much in the comp. I think that's what you're trying to get at too. Is that like something like a Jarvan would have been perfect in that case? I don't know. Maybe Hecarim would have been a pretty good pick too. Yeah, I mean they're hovering Vi too. I, I'm not even okay. saying Vi is a better pick, but I'm just saying Vi gets you into the back line and gives you some way to engage. Now, again, that all hinges on whether or not OU falls behind early because if OU's ahead, they don't need to engage. They can just be at the objective early and force Stevenson to walk into them. And that's probably what they're thinking here is, is that, um, you know, as long as they don't take risks early, they're not going to fall behind. And therefore we can just let Stevenson walk into us and then we'll fight them. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty good point. It's a very objective based team composition. Meanwhile, the Stevenson university is more of a team fight base. They have a yep. lot of good engage. They even have a lot of good disengage too. Cause Jarvan can just alt in and EQ out or rumble can just pop his ultimate on the flames, but or on that there and just walk away as it gets slowed in. Of yeah. course you got thresh, thresh LT too. You know, Stevenson really coordinates well. There's only one member on the Oakland side that can escape the Jarvan ult, and that's graves uh, without flashing. And so a Jarvan Rumble ult is more deadly than it would otherwise be, um, with, with Graves being the only one who can hop out of the ult without flash. So that'd be something I'm looking for Stevenson to do in mid-game teamfights, is pull left that Jarvan ult and immediately Rumble ult on top of it. Um, you know, if we, if we were able to listen to comms, we should hear Jarvan calling it out well in advance, so that way Rumble is placing the ult down as Jarvan ult comes in and you get the max damage out of it. So hope to see that soon. We've got a little bit of a spectator delay here, so we'll be back in a few minutes when the game starts. By a few minutes, I meant a few seconds. We're already in the game two. Oakland University versus Stevenson University. Oakland on the red side. Stevenson on the blue side here. Let's think about those level one here. All right, we're in here. And it looks like Keelan being a little bit aggressive, pushing up in the mid lane. But all in all, just spread out, doing a five-point defense. I don't think anybody's looking to get scrappy level one. Yeah, 
definitely not. I mean, there's, like we're saying, there's a lot at stake on these games and a lot that could go wrong more so than level, level one, right? I don't think it really goes either way. I mean, Rumble level one is pretty good. Um, Jarvan doesn't offer a whole lot too much level one, but yeah, I mean, oh, oh well, I guess Thresh, if anything, maybe Stevenson could have gone for some sort of cheeky invade, but um, it's it's still quite risky. Yeah, so OU goes ahead and takes the first game here. They take this as the best of three. So if OU takes one more game, it is over. If Stevenson takes another game, then we go to game three. You know, this early fight here going on. Keelan just taking way too much damage. Half health already. Kit Boy brought down roughly about the same. Yeah, he's being really aggressive there. And, you know, even if you out damage the enemy mid laner, Sometimes when you walk forward like that, you take a lot of minion damage, and that's what turns the fight. So I'm assuming that's what happened, or he missed a Q or two. Yeah, I mean, he, he was there for a while, just absorbing, soaking up so much damage in the middle of that fight. But look at the harass he's putting down on Kid Boy. Yeah, they might be just setting up a jungle gank early, or he's trying to get an early reset for an item. The one thing in mid lane here is that uh, Jarvin. Oh, Jarvin coming Off in man. for the Perfect gank timing. here. A flash forward from Ari and a flash out by Keelan. Perfect timing gets him out. At the end of the day there, that's a flash from Ari and Jarvin. And just a flash from Keelan. So it looks like Jarvin might be taking another look at mid lane here. He's got it warded though. You can see him. Does have a ward. He sees it coming. He starts walking uh -oh. away. Let's see if he can sidestep this. He cleanses instead, but he oh. is going to be taken. Oh, Almost. Stevenson University does not take Keelan down, and he aggressively walks oh. forward and still survives. He's still walking into the <laughs> lane. Again, what the hell is this? Keelan, you are 30 health. Go back to base. <laughs> but he is not scared, not deterred whatsoever. So what an interesting turn of events that is. I, I'm starting to get the trend from Oakland University that they just do not back down from a fight, no matter the circumstance. Yeah, can you imagine? I mean, he had that word on Jarvin. He knew he was coming in, and we're talking about a pretty high level of play here. So I, I don't think we can say, oh, he just didn't see it on the minimap. He saw him on the minimap and decided, I can fight this a little bit. I'll yeah. just outplay them. And uh, I can't say oh that goodness. it was the right decision, but oh. he didn't die. And the hook Pretty coming through from damage. Thresh certainly be Mr. Nefarious' fall. And a return kill from Bello and a gank from Mushin on this Graves. Thresh certain to fall with just no mana left. That was pretty well played there. I, I, again, Oakland University just playing so far up and not backing down from a fight at any point in time. They're just going to re-engage onto that. Yeah, you might see... <laughs> I'd hate to say it, but it seems like they're just a little bit cocky after last game. And Maybe. so they're just not too scared about falling down early. Three kills already at four minutes into the game. We saw last game there was one kill at ten minutes. So there's definitely a shift in how comfortable they are with fighting Stevenson University early on. And to me, that's a worrying sign. I would not want to see that. We had talked I about it before, you know, the team comps... It favors OU if we go even in the mid game, but uh, uh oh, engage here over on the bot side. Mr. Fair is getting hooked in hook line and sinker as he might sink down to this bot lane from Stevenson University. Can't quite re-engage or anything. Has to disengage, taking way too much damage. Now forced to recall back to base. Yeah, Stevenson doing making a great play, forcing Jinx to flash out. Now there's no sums for the OU bot lane. This would be something where I'd like to see Jarvin come down and gank this. And uh, to be frank with you, I'm a bit more, uh, as a jungler myself, a bit more aggressive. I'd be looking to tower dive them between towers here as Jarvin. I I'd be pushing up into that area between tier 1 and tier 2 tower and forcing Jinx out of the lane. But uh, Jarvin is here, so maybe they will make a play like that. Maybe bait out a little bit of time, try to do his same cheeky play and force Jinx out of lane. I, I don't know, maybe I would have gone for Dragon, get some good deep wards in. They had that slight window of opportunity, but it looks like they wanted to go for that turret damage instead. Some good damage there. 
All right, so at five, six minutes here. Oh, we got a Rise Teleport coming into the bot lane. Oh. See if they can lock up. Bringing no. Mushin into the bot lane, too. It's a four-person dive in bot lane. I... Bello's oh. going to drop. Bello does <laughs> drop. Let's see if Keelan does as well. I oh. think he will. Oh, that's not worth that. No. Uh, you expended four members, and you got a one for two. So, oh, you, bit of a blunder there. Not a great play, and... Are you going to get some free farm in the mid lane as a result? So I, we had talked about it before. Hey, you picked a team comp that's not that great early, but OU trying to make over aggressive plays and just force the issue. Uh, I think the saving grace here again is the jungle gap. I mean, you've got Mushin 20 CS above Mothman with two kills and an assist to boot. So uh, there's a bit of a gap there. Hopefully. Mushin can carry OU out of this slump. Yeah, I honestly, I think they should have just taken that one kill, backed off when they can, go for Dragon. They had that time, and they were able to just... Because they, they pushed down Stevenson University so low that they really wouldn't have been a factor if a team fight went underway over a Dragon Pit. So they, it would have just been a free Dragon for them. But it looks like they just they really wanted out for that blood. Yeah, we got a collapse here on the Jarvan. Now, I don't think he has EQ, so he's just a sitting duck. Mushin goes ahead and gives the kill over to Keelan. And you're right. I mean, at a certain point, when you get a champion low enough, it's almost like killing them. Now, you don't get the gold, but you get to force them back to base, and then you can take objectives while they're gone. So maybe that's something that OU is a little bit greedy there, pushing a little bit further than they needed to. But... Uh, they're still ahead about 2k gold here, so still in good shape for all the, the negatives I've been talking about here. Um, they're still in a good spot to win this game. Yeah. Gage over on the bot side here, and 1A. Aiden taking in quite a bit of damage Big here. Meanwhile, damage. Bello is going to try to protect with Nefarious, but Nefarious drops here in the process. And 1 Aiden, and Krillin is able to get a double kill onto this bot side. Stevenson University able to come out on top. Yeah, Oakland University starting a fight there. I believe Bello and Nefarious were both level 5, where Stevenson were level 6, and that's what changed the fight. I mean, you just can't fight without your ulti when your enemy team does have it. So it's going to be a big difference, and that's why that 2-0 happened right there. Now, OU's got to be pretty scared. We got a 4-kill ADC on the enemy team. <sighs> Let's be a little bit more cautious, take things a little bit more slow, and just take objectives. Yeah, I mean, it is really is all in this bot lane for Stevenson University to try to do anything. Because, I mean, okay, what we're about to say, I was literally about to say, Keelan has got this mid lane on lock. And what's even more devastating is that even if Kit Boy manages to overcome this challenge, this giant mountain of a wall that Keelan is, you still got It's John playing Galio, another champion that Ari just does not go do well against. Yeah, and at the end of the day, we talked about it last game. I'd rather have a Trinimir who's strong late game than an Ari. I'd also rather have a Ryze late game that's strong rather than yeah. an Ari. So it's the same deal here. Ryze just scales better than Ari. So if you pick Ari early game and you need to be working with your jungle to actually punish the enemy mid laner. Otherwise, it's just not a good pick. Oh my gosh. John bringing down Davely's half health just off one combo. Yeah, and the sad part is John's building tank. He really doesn't have any damage item there, so that's just base damage Galio. This is something that he's been talking to the team about, saying, hey, I think Galio is actually pretty strong in the top lane. He's got good base damage. He's able to shove out waves. So let's try it out, and I think that's what uh, OU's doing here, trying to see if in a competitive match if it's good. John going for the dive, trying to prove his point. Uh, in this case, forces the flash, which is a success. Mushin nearly caught out by Thresh, but is able to walk away, and... Walks back, back in, in <laughs> for the Raptor. Uh, <laughs> he needed it. He definitely needed it. I guess that 50 gold was worth the risk, but uh, you know what? Who's to question Mushin right now? What 56 CS, 2 and 2 scoreline. He's doing pretty well. And a oh. huge hook from Thresh over the wall. Following that flash, Nefarious is dead. Might as well just stand still and just let it happen. Yeah, oh my gosh, that blind hook over the wall. I had a good idea of where Mr. Nefarious is going to land in, but I, I, you, there's no way. I mean, just 
What a beautiful hug. We, we didn't even really see him land it in lane, but something like that. I don't, I don't know. I think he made up for it. Yeah, that was a great hook over the wall there from Thrash. I mean, incredible. Not only wasting the flash, but also getting the kill. So we're seeing Stevens University still in this game, though. I mean, with the way that this bot lane's been playing with the Zeri and the Thresh bot lane, I... Yeah. They've got to put all their marbles in trying to keep them alive to deal all the damage they can. And if anybody's going to be fed in this game, Zeri is probably going to be the best one for it. Yeah, really mobile character there. If you're new to the game, Zeri's released recently. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Beautiful. The, the no look fade away at the very end. Keelan with just massive damage. I mean, that last Q, oh, a flash, flash forward it. from Thresh and a hook. I don't think they're going to be able to catch up, but Bello is not able to escape this Jarvan ult until he flashes out. And OU oh. pushing back towards Stevenson here. A hook at last minute there. I think both teams are just ready to walk away at this point. But, I don't uh, know. Oakland University, they don't back down. <laughs> they might flash in. If they had teleport, they'd be following them right now. Yeah, I mean, a bit of a blunder there again. Uh, Jarvin just going in, and uh, you know what? I was saying early game, or I'm sorry, before the game, that uh, oh, you didn't have a lot of ways to escape the Jarvin alt, except for flash. Now, if you have flash, you just get to get out for free, and, and that's what Bellu did there. You know, otherwise he would have been dead to rights. Definitely so, and but I, I think this came in at perfect timing because Mothman being so far behind compared to, I mean, he's three levels down from Machine. What a ridiculous number. And and I don't know, how many CS is that? Like 70, 80 CS away 80. difference? And that, he's going to be so far behind. Look at the items he's building. It's, it's not even very defensive either. It's more so on the offensive side. Yeah, this is a really, really scary situation for Stevenson. I mean, I hate to say it, but... Mushin is coming up on what's called the Flame Horizon, being 100 CS above the enemy laner. Um, and in the jungle, I think that's even more impressive because you don't directly affect their CS. You know, if you're in top lane, I would argue it's easier to Flame Horizon because if you get a lead, you can zone them off of the wave directly. In jungle, you know, you can counter invade, but it's just not quite the same. Not only that, but Mushin is also the most farmed in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know how you do that as a jungler. I don't. <laughs> yeah, similar to Keelan, I, I think both players have the mentality of farming is just going to get me a more consistent win. And so that's what I'm focused on. Uh, Mushin is definitely a very efficient, smart jungler. Um, that is what he's best known for. We are seeing a bit of a roam here from Stevenson to try to catch out John over to the top lane. He does have that vision and wherewithal to understand that they are coming in. He's going to try to back out here. See if he can make it. Oh! Kills out right in time. Akril is just barely missing that hook. But I think even if they landed it, not a whole lot they can do under that turret. Yeah, sent three members top. And again, I, I think he was spot on with that hook. Keelan diving under the tower for that kill. Did not pick it up though. Good dodge by Kit Boy on Ari. So this is a scary position. I'm not really sure what Stevenson can do at this point to try and claw their way back into the game. Uh, check in again. We're at 15 minutes, down 5K gold. This is, frankly, this is exactly the position that Stevenson was in last game. So uh, I'll I'll say the statistic again. OU is 80% favored to finish this out and win the series. Yeah, and for good reason, too. I mean, they, they're they so well set up across the board. The only thing that's keeping the Stevenson team alive for this long is the bot lane. It's really the Zeri and Thresh yep. doing so phenomenally well. And it, it the thing is, it doesn't even discredit Oakland University's bot lane. They're still in this game, too, with the utility that they have. Jinx can still do quite a bit of damage over on the sidelines. And, I mean, Karma is just Karma. Karma can support in every way possible that they can. Yeah, at the end of the day here, the karma speed up on her on her shield for the team, the empowered E, is not going to change if she's fed or not. 
So, uh, what I'm trying to get down to is Mushin on Graves who's fed and Keelan on Rise who is fed will be much faster regardless of how well Ke uh, Karma's doing. So, I think that's really the importance of that pick here today is just to be able to speed up the whole team because they don't have an engage tool. So that speed up from Karma is really important. And I'd be scared to be anywhere near Keelan if I was a kit boy. Just literally, it stands right in front of him and Kit Boy's just gotta move away because Keelan just won't stop charging towards her. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm in this game now just to see if uh, Mushin's able to flame Horizon. Uh -oh. oh, and engage on to Keelan here. Nothing just yet. Nope. Gonna back out here. I I wouldn't either. But look at this. Stevenson University trying to roam, get, trying to get this pick off onto Keelan, but we're going to see it over on top lane instead. Bellow going to be able to get that tether in, get the get the chain, get the taunt in from John. Davey's still alive here, taking soaking up so much damage, but John doesn't even matter. He's going to be able to pick up that kill onto Davey's. I mean, John just walked through the flames and said, I yeah. don't care. And he's just down maybe two or 300 health. That was insane. I mean, he was actually standing in the rumble for quite a while. Uh, Rumble just doesn't have the items, and this Galio is really tanky, so it's going to be tough. I'm not really sure what Stevenson can do at this point. Yeah, oh. because Galio was such a good pick against this Rumble top lane, because, I mean, there was a lot of different picks that usually come in into the top lane, and Rumble does phenomenally well against all of them, but Galio is the one that doesn't because of that magic resist that he able to pick up in. So Rumble has zero bully, but a double fly is going to come in over from Stevenson University. They're going to try to engage. Do Mossman is going to get picked up here, but Kitboy on the side might be able to pick up this kill. Demotion, no way! He's going to be able to turn it and run it back around. Jake's ultimate going to whiff right on by, but Shutdown Gold is going to come in in favor of Dave Lee's. And now it looks like Steven University might be able to turn the tides into their favor. Mr. Nefarious just barely able to survive in for a little bit longer. Curly's should be able to get dropped down too, and he's going to get dropped in the process. And only Dave Lee's is going to be the one surviving at the end of this fight. So at the end of the day, it's a one for four for Stevenson University. And I think what really turned down or turned around that fight there was It's John on Galio. A really smart play to use that brush, the vision that Stevenson no. did not have. And Keelan just really confident <laughs> walking under the tower there and ends up using Flash for ult. Uh, not worth it at the end of the yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he underestimated how quick that respawn timer was, but I mean, I, it, it suits him well. <laughs> it's just display style. Man, I, I was very surprised by how that team fight turned out. It, it was kind of back and forth throughout it, and we even saw, Mr. Nefarious, kind of whiff the Jinx ult, and yep. from there I thought it would go more in favor of Stevenson University, but I, I think Mushin made a very quick turnaround onto Quit Kit Boy, which turned the fight right back onto their favor. Yeah. <sighs> It took a while for Mushin to fall down there, and he was able to deal a ton of damage before he did fall. So I think what really happened there is he was kind of slapping them with his gold purse. So, oh, a really important point here. Mushin just hit the flame horizon. He is now 102. Oh, never mind. Now he's just 98 CS up. That's not exciting. <laughs> Aiden How trying simple. to get out here. Thresh, good hook on the Mushin. See if he can survive. And he gets slammed by Jarvan. In return, Jarvan does fall. And Oakland University is chasing down Stevenson. A great hook and charm onto the Karma. Knocks down Karma. And the Ziri is huge. Knocking down oh Oakland God. University. Jinx is going to fall. And surely Galio will too. And Stevenson University answers back. Four kills for one. Man, Zeri was just allowed to run rampant during that last fight. They really didn't do anything to stop her and just got free damage after free damage after free damage and that cost them dearly. Now they did have, I'd say Steven University didn't have the best of engages during that fight, but because Oakland University didn't really do anything against Zeri, it just definitely just deleted them. Yeah, I mean, again, Oakland University trying to chase down the enemy team with this team comp that just sucks at doing that. 
So it's a really tough spot. Keelan here trying to stop Stevenson University facing <laughs> five members alone and is able to stop Wait. them from taking the Baron. And OU's going to turn this fight around. Jarvin surely going to fall here. Rumble all coming out. It just doesn't matter. I wouldn't be surprised if OU started fighting Baron, oh, but teleport. instead they fake the rise teleport to scare Stevenson off and they're turning on to Baron now. What a turnaround. I, they have every ability to be able to do so with Mothman being taken down and most of Stevenson University brought down so low what a great play here from Keelan I I guess Rise always being so tanky to begin with and still able to dish out that little bit of damage especially onto Kit Boy and Dave Lee's and especially Mothman who hasn't really been building as tanky especially against Magic Resist that just gave Keelan that free roam to do what he can and yeah. still stay alive if you watch back that fight, Keelan dodged everything. I mean, he had yeah. fancy feet like you wouldn't believe. Uh, he pulled out the musty flick and just showed Stevenson what he can do on Rise. 100% Dragon control and now Baron control in for Oakland University. This is going to be a very difficult fight for Stevenson to try to go up against. Yeah, they just have to blow up either Keelan or Mushin right away. There's, there's no other way that they can do it. Um, that or, or Ziri stays alive throughout the entire fight. Yeah, which is definitely easier said than done because they they do have a lot of heal to protect Zeri from the fight. But, I mean, just the way that Oakland University has been playing, they just go right in, pick off whoever they can, and either keep going if the fight's going well or just peel off. Yeah, if Stevenson has good vision set up, I think they should be able to protect Ziri even with the gold difference. Uh, I mean, it's a really big gold difference, but they might have a chance to protect her because, again, OU just doesn't have a good way to engage the fight. It's literally just Karma turn on your shield and walk at them, or Rise alt in. They just don't have a lot of good options for that, so... We'll have to see. I mean, at the end of the day here, OU doesn't have to fight Stevenson. They can just walk up and kill the towers with Baron. So it looks like yeah, that's what they're trying to do here. But look how much poke they've got going in. And the ultimate going to come in. Mr. Nefarious is able to secure that kill onto Mothman. I think that might be the push they need onto this inhibitor turret. Yeah, I just saw the position oh. there. And I don't know if he had already used EQ or not. But if he uh, had it up, maybe that would have been the time to use it. Looking at this top inhibitor here for OU. Ari engaging with a good charm on Arise. Cleanse immediately. Mushin in the back falling down. And a Thresh diving way into the back line. It's shot disrupting Stevenson. Thresh is the first to fall in this very long team fight. Mr. Nefarious getting half health. And Ziri is just shredding Oakland University. Barely surviving with almost all their members except for Keelan who just feels like he can walk up alone. <laughs> Let's go ahead and test those fancy feet again. I don't think it's oh. going to get you out of the Jarvanol, but a flash will. Man, that Oakland University, I, Stevenson University just dove in too far than they needed to. Kit Boy was just up close when he really didn't need to. They could have just waited for Krillitz to land some sort of thresh hook or Jarvan rumble to follow up with any sort of combo that they have. But just decided to go in, and that really cost them that inhibitor turret earlier on. And I guess the, the quick turnaround from Oakland University was pretty good, too. I'm glad that there's a huge CS difference for mid and jungle, because otherwise we might get punished a lot harder for some of these situations. I'll give you an example. Rise there, Keelan. That's the second time in a row... Uh, where he had flash, opted into in a more aggressive situation, and had to burn the flash to get out as a result. And got nothing yeah. for it. Last time it was Rumble Alt near the top inhibitor. <laughs> this time it's the top inhibitor, and he just walked up 1v4. So um, not a play that I would suggest. But uh, nevertheless, we're in a good position to win the game. About 11k up. I would say chances of winning the game is like 90-95%. But... Ziri is huge. Yeah. I mean, fed on CS and kills, doing a ton of damage in these uh -oh. fights. Keelan, Keelan caught out once tell. more. No flash. I, he doesn't have the flash, but he's able to just walk away because he's so speedy. Got fancy feet over there. 
Good ult by Rumble there. Mushin getting caught out and a great Ooh. Jarvan engage from the side. Stevenson not in a position to follow up though because Rumble ult has already been used. A bit unfortunate, but that was a really fancy play to come in from the side like that and trap up OU. Just wish Stevenson had more tools available to follow yeah, up on. That would have been perfect. That was a three man ultimate from Jarvan on the Cataclysm. And if only that Rumble ultimate was there, that would have been a perfect follow to the play. Because, like you were saying all game long, they've got no utility to get out of it. Yeah, there's no way to get out of it, no way to engage here, so we'll see if Siri can deal damage while surviving. That's the big thing. I mean, look at this. If OU had any tool to dive in and attack the Siri, they would, but they just have nothing. Yeah, nothing they can do. Just kind of do as much poke as they can. I guess that's going to be all that they can do is just siege these turrets as much as they can, but it, it comes at a great risk too, because immediately at any point, Stevenson can just initiate on them with a lot of utility yeah i mean ou's got a few ways to end the game uh <laughs> the easiest way they could do it i'm not saying the fastest or most efficient but the easiest way they could do it would be taking elder drake uh being able to kill a champion when they get down to 20 or 25 percent health is a pretty surefire way to win these fights regardless of whether you have engaged or not so um, that's something that's coming on the table now that they have Mountain Soul. Elder Drake will be spawning in about six minutes here. And also Baron spawning right now. Yeah, I, I think with Stevenson pushing out away from their base, this is going to give Oakland University that chance to do exactly as you say. Have that skirmish or that team fight in the midst of the jungle fighting over the objective. It's the objective-based team comp that Oakland University is heavily built around. Because they don't need to really initiate a team fight. They're all gathered at that barren pit for Stevenson University. All right, Stevenson got a good amount of vision set up on that Baron to try and deny it from OU. But an OU just is really strong right now. They have a lot of gold in their pockets. And, uh, you know, at some point they're just going to put it into a sock and whack Stevenson with it. Oh. It looks like it's happening oh. right now. Rumble, great alt to disengage that, but uh, wow. caught out by Mushin on the back end. And that's not something you'd expect, too. The full-on alt rise ultimate fully committing onto that here. Now there's not a whole lot that the Steven University squad can do. Looks like they're going to engage anyways. Mothman going to try to go for an EQ combo, but immediately gets deleted. Akuna is trying to land any single hook that they can, but it's not going to land at all. And Baron is going to be picked off here by this Oakland University team. Free Baron from Oakland, I think basically because of that play that Keelan made. Jumping three members into the rumble, catching him out on a side lane. And like you said, not something you expect. If you have vision in that jungle, you feel pretty safe taking those minions on the sideline. So, oh, uh -oh. good catch on the uh -oh. Mushin here. Half health, but then immediately gets punched back, and Ziri might fall. That's no, what they need. It's John diving into the base, taking down a few members. Thresh going to fall. Ari going to fall. And Ziri very low. She's got to run back to the base, but all of OU is in the base oh. with her. So oh. trying to fight back on the Karma, but I don't think that's going to work for her. It's John diving down. OU showing them how much money they have in their pockets. We have more money than you. We can walk at you and take you down. And so OU's going to finish that's, off this game. Yeah, that's going to be game. There's no way Mothman can do anything in 20 seconds and the amount of damage that comes in. That's going to be the game here wrapped up. Oakland University 2-0 against Stevenson University in the best of three match. Really fantastic stuff from OU there. I mean, there, there was differences. You could see there was a skill gap there in multiple lanes. I, I would say hats off to Aiden from uh, from Stevenson University. He played really well on that Ziri pick. Yeah, very strong too. I mean, it's, although it's very, a bit difficult to not do well on Ziri, still able to provide that much team, I guess, pressure in these team fights here from Zeri is still no small feat to look at. But I, I think player of the game got to be Mushin. Out farming, out damaging, out killing, out, I guess, tanking everything that out the everything. opponents did. And yeah, out everything, unfortunately. It's it's just a, a big jump gap. And that made a lot of pressure on these different lanes to allow Oakland University to really run wild and make these bold and rash plays as, as much as they can without much punishment. 
Yeah, Mushin played out of his mind there. I mean, you you could just see it both games. He just up so much CS while also applying pressure. Uh, I would say Keelan played really well as well. I mean, didn't go for too many kills early on, although this game he went a little bit more aggressive into the Ari. I think OU did a good job of coming back after the early game blunders, after being a little bit too aggressive, I think, in the laning phase and, and being able to turn it around in, in the mid game and, and keep their lead steady growing until they finish the game. Uh, one more hats off to It's John on that support the first game. I think he played incredibly well uh, throughout the series, but I think in the first game, uh, you know, swapping roles is not the easiest thing to do, even if you've played the other role before. And that's something that uh, we're really thankful It's John is able to be flexible about. So that was great. Yeah, I think all in all, pretty exciting match nonetheless. There were a few chances for Stevenson University to make some sort of a comeback. They had a few opportunities to be able to do so, but I think a lot of overextendedness and unfortunately Malfman not able to bring too much to the table means that's really going to seal the deal for them. And especially with the way Keelan was just harassing Kit Boy under turret at multiple points in both games, it's just it was just wild to look at. I mean, harassing their whole team under turret. Again, really, I'm not yeah. saying that that's the right play <laughs> or that I think it was a smart play, but it, it it's takes, a play. <laughs> yeah, it's a good amount of brass to walk under the tower uh, against four members and just tell them, look, I won't get hit by a skill shot. I guarantee it. So uh, you know, a few times he got caught up by Jarvanalt, which is not a skill shot, but <laughs> nevertheless. Uh, oh, you taking down Stevenson University in a pretty decisive fashion. 2-0 win for OU. OU moves to a 3-0 undefeated record in C-Law. We are in the ECAC conference. Uh, so we one more win gets us to first seed for the playoffs. If we win the playoffs, then we automatically qualify for C-Law championships, which essentially is, I believe, the top 36 teams in North America. So a great feat. Hopefully we can make it there. I think we're on the right pace to do it, but uh, we'll have to see next week. Next game is Saturday, 3 p.m. That'd be it for today. Starwise, thank you so much for joining me in the cast today. It was a pleasure. Always happy to cast Golden Grizzlies games. Uh, well, but thank that... you so much for having me. I Honestly, it's a lot more fun for me just watching these uh, incredible plays from these players and the amount of skill that I get to see and strategy that comes in and coordination from all these different players. And I, I, I always love to see just full on aggro and turret diving and stuff. And Oakland University really has a good representation of what it means to just not back down from a fight and just take them head on. Yeah, they're, they're not afraid. They're definitely not afraid. Now, that might bite yeah. us a little bit against uh, teams of a much higher caliber, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with our performance so far in this league and excited to see them compete next week. So uh, thank you all for coming out, watching the stream. If you haven't already, drop a follow. That'll make sure you see every single one of our matches. In addition to League of Legends, we also have Rocket League, Smash Brothers, and Overwatch. And soon... Valorant. Ooh, I'm excited. So stay tuned. Uh, other thing to, to follow if you want to is the Twitter. That's probably the most important piece of information if you're looking to follow our team. All of the information goes out on Twitter. So definitely be sure to follow us. We are at Oakland Esports. But that'll be a wrap for today. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend.
Oh